16 players started, now only eight remain. This is the final table for the Party Poker Premier League Season 6. I'm the best! I love this game. Boom. Yeah. It's never on you when you act. You really think you're trying to angle with this? Yes. Then you're an idiot. The guy had 600,000. He had a lock to make the final table. And he risked it all against me. Are you happy to sacrifice her and beat me? May the best woman win. Wow. Oh! I'm Tudor Futili. I don't make mistakes. Come on, you sucker. You never fold. I don't even know what's going on. I know you're capable of something like that. Either we go to dinner, we hang out, or we double up. Wow. I'm the best bluffer in the world. Tonight, the final table gets underway here at Asper's Casino in London. The stakes are huge, and this is what they're playing for, the Premier League trophy. And of course, the $450,000 first place prize. Tonight, the very best players in the game come together for one of the biggest final tables. This is our lineup. WSOP bracelet winner, Jennifer Tilly. Who would have thought it? Jennifer Tilly at the final table of the Premier League. I'm so excited and thrilled. I feel like I've won already. German tournament specialist, Tobias Renkemeyer. Now that I'm here, I'm, I definitely want to take it down and uh, I'll try to give my best. Main event winner, Jonathan Duhamel. I got a lot of confidence, uh, so I mean, we'll see how it goes, but as of now, I'm feeling good, feeling rested, so I'm just ready to go out there and battle it up. Last season's runner-up, Jungle Man. I have hundreds of thousands more dollars, so it's always nice, and um, even more gratifying is, is the fact that Scott Seeger won't win, because he's really gotten my nerves lately. High stakes cash player, Dan Shack. Obvious goal is to win it all, and Anything less than that, you know, will be unsatisfactory at this point. English poker superstar Sam Trickett. I personally want to win it just because it's 450,000. And uh, obviously, it's nice to win an event with uh, 16 top class players. High roller champion Talal Shakerchi. For me, it's the same as any other game. I want to win and I'm going to play my best. The one drop champion Antonio Esfandiari. This is my first Premier League, and it's going to feel fantastic to take home this, this title. With one of the biggest titles on the line in Premier League history, it's going to be an incredible final. Let's hand over to your commentators now, Jesse May, and 13-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner, Phil Helmuth. Phil, these are the eight from the 16 who started in the Premier League Poker 6 who have made it to the final table. Uh, and these eight all deserve to be here. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say yes, they all deserve to be here. I felt like uh, Jungle Man had the worst strategy uh, coming into this, um, but I also feel like um, he's just so talented that he made it work. So I'm going to say yes, they all deserve to be here. Let's have a look at the starting chips due to the, their places in the league. Points converted to chips at a rate of 10,000 and chips for every point. How, how much is this going to affect things? Well, it's a huge thing. You know, it, everything is dependent on the prize pool here. Well, Phil, this is how the prize money breaks down at the final table. Remember, players have won $2,000 per point during the league stages. Now they have a chance to add to that check and the winner will take home a massive $450,000 on top of the money they have already won so far. Before we were playing points, and now we're playing poker. Now we're playing poker. This is real poker. Winner take the most money, the first prize, the trophy. There's nothing to think about except going forward. I have hardly any brain power left. Talal, Talal is going to continue to raise and play the way he plays, but everybody knows how crazy he's been playing, so, you know, he's going to get a lot of action, I think. 
Now, all the players know what all the other players are doing. Interestingly enough, it'll be interesting for me to see. I've been told that Rankin Meyer will not do a lot of crazy three betting. Scott Seaver thought that he'd give that up because I thought he'd get himself in trouble trying to three bet a lot of people. Uh, which is how we got there. And so, the, to me, the interesting dynamic is the three bet. You know, Talal Shakerchi has maintained something like a 35 or 40% VPIP in every heat of this Premier League. Uh, if he keeps that up here, with these power players on his left, he'll be in trouble. But so far, it's going well. He could get himself in a lot of trouble. This is a relationship. Shakerchi and Rankemeyer that has deepened and blossomed throughout this Group B of the Premier League. <laughs> They've probably played, I'd say, a hundred hands head up uh, <laughs> pots together. And you see, this is this is the kind of stuff. I mean, it's like they could get a room here, Phil. And what is this check raise going to get re-raised or? Yes, yes, it is because uh, I think, especially with Talal, and I think he will re-raise re here. But a call is not horrible. And obviously, and I believe, yeah. I really believe, if this pot came up two hours from now, Talal is going to just re-raise him right here, right he, here. He may also have plans for the turn if he misses. Are there certain good cards to raise the turn? With? Well, okay, he's now hit the nuts. I mean, this he is has the nuts. Now it's a matter of how much can he extract, and you know, will Rankenmeyer fire? See now, Rankenmeyer, interestingly enough, here, he he may come out firing, representing a straight or a flush. Little does he know that Shikurchi actually has the flush. And for Shakerchi, call is, is always best here to try and let Rankemeyer hang himself, or should he just start getting money in? I believe that he should he should know that there's a good chance that his opponent does have air, but I think he's opted to take a different line. He's going to try to get all the money with the raise. raises to 82,000. Obviously, if he is putting this sort of raise in, he kind of feels like Rankemeyer could actually have a strong hand here, two yeah. pair, or maybe even made a straight. Or yeah, it's. I don't blame him for a raise. I mean, there's something to be said for raising when you have the nuts, the best possible hand, and give yourself a, give your opponent a chance to go crazy, and get a re-raise. And whether he has it or not, it's only the the third hand. I could Rankemeyer just, just blow his cool? And I mean, is there any kind of is there any kind of lot? Okay, is there any kind of logic for making the all-in move there? Would it work in some first cases? Hand, it could work in some cases, but uh, you know, Rankemeyer, um, you know, I, I'd like to. He did at least look at Talal a little bit, but I'd like to see him focus a little bit more on the Action. opponent's face in that spot because. One thing that uh, really good or great poker players can see oh, is when their well. opponent has the best possible hand. And and that's just like, uh, uh, that's just a kind of a fact, a known fact that all the great players will say is we know when our opponent has the best possible hand. That's an easiest tell to pick up. If he's a white magician, what kind of magician are you? Antonio's a fake magician. A fake oh, oh, Jesus. No. no, it's blah, not blah. real magic. You make it look like things are happening, but it's just an illusion. It's not really happening. So how many real magicians do you know? <laughs> well, like, a white magic person, that's a real magician. That's somebody that summons the forces of the universe and create, has supernatural power. So that's the You're just tricky. You do things with your hands. So you don't yeah. raise <laughs> Story of my life. A big difference between magic and white magic, Jennifer well, said. Once people say. figure out what you do, then you're not a magician at all. You're just somebody that's trying to do tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when you met Phil and he was trying to see what you were doing? And you, would, you were trying to move away from him because he was disturbing you? I remember. Yeah, because you knew once he figured out your tricks, he wouldn't be impressed by you anymore. I would say Shakerchi's chances of calling this flop are somewhere between 100 and 500 percent. And sure enough. I agree. No, no, he's like a magic castle type magician. He's not like Merlin from King Arthur's court. Where are they located, just so I know to say? Boy, Phil, even when you're not at the table, you dictate the table dynamics, it seems like. <laughs> well, thank you, Jennifer Tilly. I really appreciate that. <laughs> She's, she started on, on Antonio earlier. They're really great friends friends in fact you know Phil Lux here with us in the booth and, and I know that you know <laughs> he's very connected to both uh, Jennifer Tilly and Antonio so to me this is an interesting dynamic uh, Sam Trickett confessed to me that he doesn't really know Talal that well he's been hearing about his game he obviously knows of Talal yes 
You know, Phil was all mine until Jennifer came along and stole him from me. That's right, lucky me. <laughs> you know what's crazy? Glamorous movie star, Phil Locke. Like, go figure. I still think it's a documentary experimentation, <laughs> some sort, like, how do you make some bum think He's I'm really in love with him? He's a very lucky man. Of course. Yeah. I've never seen any, met anybody like Phil before, That's ever. correct, because no one like Phil exists on the Thank planet. Thank God. Or will ever. <laughs> or will ever. He really is special. He is something else. Look Antonio just said it well here. He said, he said, glamorous movie star and Phil Locke. Day, yeah. I don't get it. But Phil Locke just smiles by now. He's used like to Antonio like, exactly needling him like that. So. <laughs> you were particularly a player who, who knocked heads with the jungle man. Uh, the other player, uh, Sam Trickett, I think, uh, had quite a few run-ins with him. To be fair, I, I let Jungle Man, I didn't play a pot. I mean, I folded eights against him, nines against him, all these hands. It wasn't until about our 400th hand that I finally got him <laughs> trapped and drawing pretty much dead on the flop, and he decided he was going to try to outplay me. Um, <laughs> see, there's a different Tobias folding the 5 3 of Cubs. What a great spot for Duhamel to actually have a hand against these two blinds. I mean, this is very unlucky for An Antonio. It is. And Antonio doesn't need an ace ten to three bet here. He can he can three bet with any two cards he wants in this spot. So he, Antonio's gone ahead. Remember the blinds are only one and two, but Duhamel may re-raise it. And then Antonio, I think it's going to come down to his reading ability. But it's a pretty unlucky hand matchup. Let's see if Antonio's white magic can save him. Duhamel starting this final table with just over 200 big blinds, while Antonio just about half that. I mean, as strong as Jax is, Phil, is it 100 big blinds strong? Can you get 100 big blinds in before the flop with this hand, or can you against Duhamel Antonio? Duhamel can against Antonio because he knows that Antonio has been three betting him light all the time. There's a dynamic between these two that's existed the whole Premier League. I think the proper play would be for Antonio just to fold here. Good fold, Antonio. It Good is. Fold. That is a disciplined fold. He did no fun, but it had to be done. Now, if Antonio would have lost a lot more chips there, I would have. Uh, I would have said that I understood a little bit why, because of the dynamic. Um, but this is different. This is the finals, and Antonio. I think woke up to that fact, and uh, and he made a good laydown. It wasn't a great laydown. It was it was a very good laydown. You can look at the positive side. But I always bounce off like a hundred thousand the first few minutes anyway, so I feel bad at home. Let me ask you about Jonathan Duhamel, Phil. Uh, there's sort of been this trend in the poker world maybe the last 10 years where main event champions are not automatically given credit as great players. Um, but for me, Duhamel, I don't want to say he's proved himself because he's done a lot since he's won the World Series, but I feel like he's impressed quite a few people here this week. Do you agree? He really has. He's, he's been very steady. You know what I mean? Like, he's come in here. He's not afraid to, to play great. He's been very, very, very steady. This very tricky situation where Jungle Man raised with Queen Ten of Diamonds, oh, and Rankenmeyer smooth called with Ace King, hoping somebody else behind came after it because he knows the reputation the Jungle Man has of playing too many hands. So Rankenmeyer's trying to use Jungle Man's loose image to his advantage and get someone to re-raise behind. And actually, Shikurchi had a hand with King Queen that he could have potentially re-raised with. He decided not to, and I suspect this hand might be played just a little bit differently later on in the match today, like two or three hours from now. Great point. It's clever stuff from Rankemeyer if this is the strategy he chooses to employ. All the loose three betters are sitting directly behind him. Right. And a great spot for Rankemeyer here with top pair, top kicker. And he and Shikarchi have already battled. So because of that, um, remember, they've already played one pot where where Rankenmeyer, um, you know, check raised on a belly buster and then bet into the nut flush when he was drawing dead. And uh, they're, already, they're used to putting chips in against each other. So Talal may well raise here. Let's just see. I think, I think he's probably going to call. He has too many people behind him where he might have to worry about a set of threes or set of nines or something. Yeah, that was just today. I mean, uh, they have played a hand uh, in one of the heats. I think it may have been the last heat where Shakirchi, uh, he, he check raised 
Tobias on, I believe it was an ace 10 deuce board with the three four and hit the straight on the turn, the five came, and then Tobias ended up calling him down with king high for loads of chips. Wow. So because of this dynamic between the two of them, this pot could end up being much bigger than it would be, you know, if you, <laughs> if this dynamic, if they just sat down for the first time and didn't have the histories. By the way, uh, Jungleman could have closed the action for the belly buster on the flop and didn't. He would have. Yeah, hit he had it. the queen ten of diamonds. He could have called twenty there. Yeah. And Jungleman's been hitting a lot of those hands, to be honest. Three is the best card in the deck for Rankenmeyer. Anything below a nine is great. Actually, a nine's pretty good for him too. It's hard to think that. Talal has a nine. Uh, it is it is a potentially dangerous card, but wow, what a great check Talal made. What a great check. Plenty more Premier League Poker 6 action to come in a minute. This event has become one of the most anticipated tournaments on the calendar, and it's now nearing the conclusion. We started with 16, now eight remain, and tonight we crown the new Premier League champion. The final is underway, so let's get back to the action. I'm like, how did that mic fall out of my dress? Can't play poker. Been a little bit of movement on the leaderboard tonight. since we've started. Rankemeyer lost a few, has now gained them back. But S. Fandiari. Uh, has dropped a few chips. To be fair, I feel like Rankemeyer won the minimum on that hand against Talal, uh, both through Talal's good play and Rankemeyer, I think, might have been able to find a few more chips there. He could have bet a little bit more on 4th Street, and he sh should have valued about the river, in my opinion, because he can still get away if Talal makes a huge raise. Rankemeyer and Jungleman, this is their first meeting. The Jungle from Group A, Rankemeyer from Group B, and I know they played a little bit in the cash game in Prague last year, but that would be it. Right, and Rankemeyer um, with the 10 Jack of Diamonds, that's a hand he doesn't want to raise with because he doesn't want to get re-raised. He wants to just take a flop. And from his point of view, he just hit the nuts because it's against Jungleman, and Jungleman raises every button, so he's got to feel really good about his Jack. Rankenmeyer thinks he has the best hand. He's trying to decide how do I extract the most. I mean, most players here, Phil, would just sort of take a passive check call line. Rankenmeyer has been one of those guys that doesn't mind check raising the flop. Uh, he's chosen not here. Yeah, check call safe. Not the best card for Jungle Man because now it might slow down Rankenmeyer. But Rinkemeyer's calling 20,000 or whatever Jungle Man bets. It looks like a, a reasonable bluffing card for Jungle Man if he's been Do called once, 20, right? Yes. Rinkemeyer's been put under pressure a couple times already. He's had two run ins with Talal. Now with the Jungleman, he's being forced to get in action early. Yeah, he just, it's really hard to fold that. You know, it's more like a hero fold in this format. That could be an action killer. No, I don't think so. I think Jungleman's going to pursue, and I think he's going to bet 30,000. I think one of the... The things that are the hallmarks of Premier League poker is that these guys are good, and it doesn't matter how thin a value bet is, they're taking it. Boy, he's going quite big here. I mean, that's quite big, Phil. Yeah, and you know, I don't, I don't envy Rankenmeyer right now because it is Jungle Man, and he, the only thing that could save him is uh, you know, the fact that Jungle Man has bet all four straights, raised before the flop, bet the flop, bet the turn, and bet the river, which adds up to a four barrel bluff if he's bluffing. Um, so I'm gonna say if someone bets at you four times, they're gonna have it 90% of the time in today's poker. I think Jungle Man's played the hand 
pretty close to a standard way to play it, and he got called. And Rankin Meyer had a chance to show me something there and make a great read and lay it down, and he didn't do it. I don't know, we'll have to see. I've been trying to figure out if Rankin Meyer has really great reading abilities or not, and I haven't seen that, because he's done well on the high rollers, and I know that, don't misunderstand me, I understand he's a top-notch player, but I'm trying to see what his reading abilities look like, and he's made a lot of bad decisions in the last couple of heats that I've commentated when he's re-raced people when they were really strong. He's taken a hit. Renka Meyer starting with about 460,000. He's down under 400 right now. So it's it's Jennifer reach for some green chips, which is. Um, which is a little bit of sign of strength, you know? And maybe if she hadn't done that, maybe if she hadn't reached for the green chips, uh, Talal would have raised her here. She's going for a slightly larger raise size. Well, it's worked out well. I don't mind the fact she opened for six, but can she find a check here? Wow. You, feel, you feel like if she finds a check, she might get Talal to start betting at it. I think probably actually this, the bet is probably her best play based on their dynamic. And wow, what an ace for her. Oh my god. Fire again, Jennifer. 10,000 or something. Now she checks. I mean, if, if he had something, she's trying to make it look like she's got a king. Is that the idea? But isn't the fact that if Talal had something on the flop, he still got something on the turn? Maybe even more. I mean, the straight hit, the flush hit, it yeah, all hit. Yeah. And so. Who are we to say she's going to get Max here? If she raises, will he call? He's going to have a decision anyway. Oh, beautiful race. She raised 30,000. Well played, Jennifer. Well played. He, he, he might just have to pay off 30 more. <laughs> He's asking, what the heck did she check on the turn? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, does it? Especially on a paired board. Would she check back three queens? No, she'd be scared he would be drawing to a flush. Would she check back a flush? No, she'd be scared he was drawing to a house. Is that right? That's, that's as usual, Jesse, you're, you're showing your poker skills in the booth. He hates it. But he Doesn't it make off. sense, he says. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Jennifer knows what she's doing, you know? I mean, uh... She bet the flop, which which I do actually like. I would have bet the turn. Um, I reversed my position that her bet on the flop was a bad bet. She has to bet the flop. I would have probably bet the turn as well, but well, she may she have got the maximum dollars the way she played it. That's the fact. Did you go out last night, John? I did not go out. No, I tried, but yeah. no one else. No, you text me. There were no what? <laughs> There were no takers. No takers. Uh, I tried a few Joe, you need to roll dogs, huh? With a tie like that? What? You need to roll dog. <laughs> Sorry? Roll you know what dogs. a roll dog is? No. What's that? Roll dog is like, you know, someone you go out wingman. with. Wingman. 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 A wingman. Oh, I normally do. But just this time, I guess not. That was a good story. Are you a good wingman, Jungle? <laughs> huh? Are you a good wingman? Like, if your friend is doing OK with a girl, you step in and step up to the plate? Uh, and here's Jungle Man with his normal yeah. hand. Yeah. Aces. Aces twice in 15 hands. Is that what your wingman do, Antonio? And Renka Meyer with the king ten. The he's he's going to get involved. You had to take all the doggy girls and keep them occupied. <laughs> had your way with the cute ones. Wow. <laughs> no, but Phil and I did OK together. I sure. We did OK together. Yeah. I guess the first well, dynamics for the three bet sort of involve the fact that it's just the first level, so these guys are happy to look at flops. We were good. Look at this. Which wow. brought everybody in. <laughs> Antonio's going to call, too. Seven well, well, this is a bad scenario to have two aces and have... <laughs> I mean, in, in some two ways... Two aces and you have five, six players call? All right, how done can you be with a hand before the flop when you have two aces? This is about as bad as it gets. Yeah, six five ways. players call him. Oh, right. Seven 
So, I mean, this is just one where he just, he has a, sh he, he might just make a really big bet here just to kind of like find out where he's at. Okay. By some miracle, he's actually ahead after the flop. Well, it's not that unusual that he'd be ahead after the flop. Do Hamal's flop top pair. And it's against Jungle Man. <laughs> he's never folding. I mean, when Jungle Man goes on a rush, his reputation is he's such a loose goose. He's just going to get action, you know? Sure, but he did bet into five people there, right? Do you have to take that into account, or? Ten is not that tricky a card for him. Uh, he might just bet 40 here. Forty-five thousand, and Duhamel's not going to fold here, I don't think. I mean, how locked in is Duhamel just to call call? It feels like he's it's Jungle Man, right? You know, and unless Duhamel has picked up, like, if he folded here, it would be—I uh, just have to say it was a great fold. I'm going to have to use the term "great fold" for this one. That is impressive. That's an impressive fold. You yeah. called it a great fold, Phil. I'm, I'm going to say it's a great fold. Yeah, I really am, because considering it's against Jungle Man, the only way you can fold top pair there against Jungle Man is if you have a great read. He had a great read. It was a great fold. 99.9% .9 of the world is going to call the 45,000 there. What's the story there. about Antonio? Name a topic. Paper and magic, right? Yeah. I think, I think people like cards like magic. We are in the same place, just um, really a stone's throw away from Olympic right. Stadium here, this uh, new part of East Westfield London. Westfield Mall with yeah. four levels and a huge food court. It's just unbelievable the number of people, Jesse. I'm, I've seen football stadiums empty and not look as full. I was coming down the escalator from the second to the first floor, and I looked out and I wished I had my camera because it, the hallway was filled as far as I could see. I was like, what is this? Jungle Man has put in the three bet. He's done it against the Esfandiari Open and the Tricket Flat. So Esfandiari has a chance here. If he can make a great read against Jungle Man and ship it, he's going to win all the chips out there in the pot. Seven and that might bring Tricket because they're both trying to flop a set. So many people would have just flatted there on the button with the Queen-10 offsuit, feeling like a multi-way pot. Why does the Jungle Man 3-bet? I think Trickett's going to call this. And uh, he sees an opportunity, too. Maybe he'll ship it. No, he's going to call. He sees the opportunity because you do. Well, and, uh, those are two great poker players, those two in the shot right there. And, you know, and I think, uh, and I think, I think they think a little bit like me and that we want to try to flop sets because it's a good way to win a lot of chips and trick it's flopped a set so it's just that's exactly what he was hoping for he's just right now he's so happy he is so happy because he's thinking to himself you know this guy the jungle man has got me got me got me and now i got him now if s fondiari um gets involved in any way, Sam Trickett's probably going to raise. But if he doesn't, Sam may just call and, and try to let Jungle Man hang himself. I mean, doesn't Trickett kind of have to call because it wouldn't make sense if he does anything else? Like, what would what is he trying to represent if he, if he check raises here? So right now, Trickett's w running through his mind is, am I going to make more money raising or am I going to make more money calling? And he's decided to raise. He sure has. But he also saw what I did to Jungle Man when I check raised him. That's top right. Pair and Jungle Man floated. So that was in the biggest hand of the fourth heat. Yeah, Jungle I remember Man. that one well. <laughs> uh, Jungle Man went for it with absolutely nothing. Could we be seeing something similar here? Wow. It's trick at see. Uh, hopefully, you know, I'm not rooting against Jungle Man, but. And the um, way that pot went is that you let on the turn and Jungle Man raised with absolutely nothing. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So right now he's in just a beautiful position here. He just has, he has a Jungle Man in there way off of his rocker. Jungle Man got in, got in his rocker off of his rocker against me in the fourth heat and cost me the Premier League when he hit runner runner. Remember, Jess? I do. But I don't think he's going to have so much luck against uh, Trickett here. Now, Trickett has to find a way to bet small. He knows the pattern of the hand that I played. He may even check this.
he has a tough decision here. I'd, he's checked. Uh, I love it. I, I gotta say I love it. I gotta say I love it because a bet gives Jungle Man a chance to get away from this hand. And, uh, oh, beautiful play, Sam, beautiful. So could Sam even have something now that is like almost like a 10 jack or something like that, the same kind of hand as Jungle Man? Now here's the situation that, you know, his Jungle Man's gone ahead. Here's the problem. If Sam just calls, he's announced the strength of his hand with the call. It's hard to just call. Um, Sam's wishing he had about 200,000 so the Jungle Man could try to bluff him the 150 more on the river. I think, I think he only has about 180, so I think he's forced to raise here. He probably would hate to raise here. Yeah, in his mind, Jungle Man's probably drawing dead, right? Right. You know, it's it's not a completely dry board, but it's fairly dry. Man. Jungle Man is, in fact, drawing to just a jack. Wow, what a, wow, what a so situation for Sam. that's come up so early. He's just, he's trying to figure out if, oh, beautiful play. Oh my God. He I, is going he's to really let gambling. the jungle hang himself on the river. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, and Jungle Man, who's had all the cards, is in danger of bluffing off all of his money. Jeez, I kind of feel like Sam has played this hand in such a way that he looks like he has a draw. You know, he's got there are the, no draws, the 10 Jesse. jack, perhaps. No. The longer he studies, the weaker it makes him look. So, can he find the check? Or he's going all in. Really weird. Too bad. Great start for Sam Trickett. He came in with a little bit of agenda here. He had a little bit of revenge on the on the tap, and revenge is a dish best served cold. Weird, Santa played all tournament. I was a weird hand. I don't think I've ever seen that line get sent it all in my life. No, I didn't fold anything. Huh? I didn't do anything to fold. They've played the first level blinds on Abbey 2 and 4,000. You give an A plus to Sam Trickett, Jonathan Duhamel. Who else is impressing you so far or needs to change up? I think Talal Shakurchi needs to slow down a little bit, and pretty much everybody else has played well. After the break, this final table continues. One of these eight players will lift the trophy at the end of the night. Action is fast and furious here at the Premier League. This has been the strongest poker lineup ever assembled in the Premier League, and now the final table is in action. Tonight, there will be a new name on the trophy as we crown the Season 6 champion. Now let's go back over to your commentary team. We've had a lot of Premier League poker champions. Healthy, Black, Scott Seaver, David Benjamin, J.C. Tran. Who will be number six? I saw J.C. Tran recently, said he was thinking about coming over, but I guess he just couldn't make it. He's a family guy. I think he doesn't like to travel outside of California and Vegas as much as he used to, but certainly a fantastic player. Yeah. What do you say, Jack? I don't know, I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what did you have, Jungle? Hey. You know, in your career, Phil, I'm sure. You've seen so many players who they run over uh, tournaments and the whole circuit for a while. Um, but until they'd be able to develop that tight gear and know when to use it, they're never going to be consistent champions. And tight gear is tougher than people think sometimes. Yes, yes. And here's a rink of my. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Guys, come along. I mean, Michael Mizrachi did that. He came along. He. He won like two or three tournaments in a month or whatever, month and a half, and then he didn't do anything for a long time, and I thought, well, you know, maybe he's done. But he readjusted his game and came back and won the 50K Players' Championship twice, and it's just been so impressive, so. It's a great example. Now, this was raised UTG under the gun from Trickett to eight and called in a bunch of spots, including Duhamel with the pocket nines and the small blind. And Tobias is in there, too, with queen nine. It is the best hand, and he doesn't want to bet it. Well, he has one. He has two horrible cards, a three or a nine. That now a nine would be a great card for him. See, his check there, as it turned out, which I didn't like, by the way, is going to trap Duhamel. Duhamel is now drawing completely dead to 
Rankemeyer's hand completely dead. I mean, obviously, or I guess he's, he's done it for deception, but is it, is it so deceptive that it's almost like unbelievable that who would check top pair uh, in a five-way pot? It is very deceptive, and, and I think what his reasoning on the flop was, uh, on a queen four deuce flop, is all right, it's likely, someone raised, if someone does have a pair, it's likely to be deuces or fours in that range. And so I don't really want to lose a ton of chips here with top pair. And so, but my argument would be maybe he should have bet the flop because that's a good way to find out whether they have it or not and to actually cut your losses if they check raise. Um, but this has worked out extraordinarily well for him. And uh, of course, he's rooting for a nine. So that's actually a pretty good card for Rinkemeyer because, I mean, for Duhamel, because now Duhamel can't beat a queen and he can't beat a four. And he also might think that uh, the best play here is to try and check and induce, although. Did he do it? That's what he's done. Now, depending on the bet size here, from Rankemeyer, uh, Duhamel may snap call 20 or 30,000. He's just gone a little bigger, just enough to make you think, Phil. Very, very hard for Duhamel to fold here. Very, very hard. I mean, this is, he right in his mind, he's like, well, he doesn't have a queen. Is he value betting sevens even? I can beat sevens. Is he value betting ace high? Probably not, but, and there's all the bluffs. So I think you're gonna see Duhamel make a call here. He doesn't love it, but... What in the world is going on here? This Duhamel, wow! Phil. You know, I have not had a chance to see him play other than with his cards face down, and I assumed that there was some luck involved. I oh know my gosh, you have been, you've missed, been missing out. This, I know, oh I gosh. know how talented you Duhamel have read is. The he's a world champion, yeah. and he has, and he has, and I'll tell you something else. I mean, he's worked hard in this game. Yes, main event champions. You asked us earlier. A lot of times, people are just like, well, they were lucky, and in general, that is the case. I mean, it, it, it's, 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 it's someone who might be a top one or two hundred player in the world, or might be top thousand player in the world that somehow, you know, wins a bunch of flips and makes it down there. Um, and then, but then that's just the beginning of the story, and we've had world champions that work really hard at the game and, and keep trying to improve. And and, uh, and Duhamel has played in the high stakes games in Canada. And um, yeah, could he be the, the, the best main event champion since Carlos Mortensen? I mean, it, you know, that's, uh, he's, uh, <laughs> this is pretty strong stuff. This guy's impressive. I get mad. Are you kidding? How do you fold that hand just so quickly? <laughs> I mean, it's one Twice thing to get now. away. Twice now. And great folds are some of the hardest things to make. Those are great know. folds. Yeah. Does it do that thing where you're all in and then all of a sudden your connection breaks? Or? Uh, that doesn't have it so much, but I like lost fish action. Shikerchi and Trickett. This is round two. And Sam's played a very defensive game against uh, Talal. This is the second time he's checked back the flop after raising pre. He put out a few CDs that didn't work well. Someone took the music to South Africa, became as big as the Beatles, and he didn't know for 30 years. Really? Wow. It's the most incredible documentary, Searching for Sugar Man. Oh my God, somebody else was recommending that to me. It's very good. It's very well, Sam's touching. now checked it twice. Wow. As has to allow. Imagine being as big as the Beatles in a, in a, in a country <clears throat> and never knowing. So where was the money going? Watch the documentary. Oh, okay. Obviously, I, I miss that. Can't you have a, a riverbed? He says so yes. I created some music in the States. Okay. Put out a few records. Flopped. Someone took one of the records just naturally to South Africa, played it for her boyfriend and it spread like wildfire, and for 20, 30 years, he was just as big as the Beatles. Sick. And he never even knew it. Cool. Can you imagine? Well, well Sam's so gonna get the information he, he wanted. Oh, he has the losing hand. Anyway. <laughs> Next time you're on your 24-hour journey, searching for sugar, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was checked all the way and then back all over. <laughs> I was still thinking it through in my head, so that's why. That's why. <laughs> Two seven folds, 
Three raises to eleven thousand. Six four folds. Do Hamal, what are you gonna do? Well he's gonna have to react to the Shakerchi three bet. And so will Jennifer. Ooh, does she have enough to peel here? No. No, I would like to have seen her fold this. A 5-7, it's just she's putting too high a percentage of her chips in with a 7 and a 5 at this point. I hope she has a plan. She does, it'll work, because Talal is on ace high here. And it's a mission. I wonder if Jennifer should, should be thinking that Talal would be three betting her with uh, a narrower range, because uh, considering that she's conservative, that... That might not be true. Anyway, she passed it. Enjoy. Well, she, I don't think the players look at her and think she's conservative. I she's think not, they look at she? her. Yeah, they look at her and they think what I think, that if you re-raise her, she's going to call you, and uh, she's tough, man. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about her. If you have to pick one guy to make the final four, it's Dan Shack. He knows how to get there. He really does. I mean, he, uh, they, the players feel that his weakness is he'll flop top pair and put way too much money in with one pair. That's what they feel Dan Shack's weakness is. And so, you know, but that means you can't bluff him. <laughs> so. Four raises to 9,000. Here comes Shikurchi. Oh, well, of course. It's all he could do not to three bet. Do him out with ace, ten of spades, a very natural, normal place to three bet it. You know, Shakurchi could have anything. Yep, and here comes Do him out first. I mean, it's just a standard re raise, and uh, it just seems to be okay, but I mean. Jerry Antonio, please let me have something here. Uh, an indication that he's willing to go with this if it's a little weaker than normal. And it's ace-10, Phil. This is, this is the kind of hand where you could make a play if you feel like everyone's light. Is that correct? Well, you know, once it's two bet and three bet, Antonio is just going to have to get away because it's too likely that one of the, one of the guys has his hand beat. So um, he can do whatever kind of read he wants to do, Hamal. But There's 58,000 in there to pick up. Is that going to... Tempt him. You believe that if he does make this play, it's a little rash. He's not going to make it. No. I mean, you just, you just can't do it. I mean, it's just not with a two bet and not with a three bet in front of you. Sorry, man. You don't <laughs> and with the ace king, even though it's early at this final table, you have to be willing to get the money in if you're asked the question. Well, we're playing to win now. This yeah. is this is not points anymore. This is uh, this is poker. So Duhamel now has the information he's behind. It's just a question of whether or not he chooses to believe it or not. But he's been sent the message. Yeah, I think I think really he's supposed to get away from this relatively easily. He's made all the right moves so far, but the problem is sometimes when the pressure's on you and you make two or three great plays, you don't know you made two or three great plays. And so we're asking him again just to make a good play and fold. And um, I think he'll reach the right conclusion here. One thing we did notice about Duhamel is in the heats, a couple times, he chose to send the message early, if you know what I mean. And then he did! He went all in! He's wrong! He was trying to send a message, and he is not the boss. So, Phil, what do you have to say? Well, you know, Duhamel made some great folds, but he made a really poor play here. I mean, basically what he did is he just five bet on with ace-10 suited against a guy who hasn't four bet very much. And uh, it's just, I, I don't, it's very, I don't like seeing people five bet almost ever with ace-10 offsuit. So. Wow, and he's shaking his head. Duhamel's not happy about it. He's actually got some outs to a split pot. It yeah, would be a reprieve eight. from the governor. Yeah, and he's, he'd be so, so happy just for the split here. I'll tell you, I mean, I don't know who's more disappointed, Duhamel or the poker fans out there who are so much enjoying watching this guy's Premier League. 
Oh, and he got a split. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Amazing. And Demora, and let me tell you something right now. His aura just disappeared, okay? He disappeared. Every player at that table says, wow, look at the mistake he made. He's vulnerable. He's been sitting there playing so tough. He's had it. He's made all the right moves and made one major blunder late. Basically eight-handed in the Premier League final table. And all of a sudden, Antonio and Trickett are looking at him differently. They're saying he's vulnerable. So his aura with the rest of the players at the table is gone. I can live with this Jennifer Tilly folding ace nine under the gun. Wow, look how, how classy is Tobias. He says, eh, I can live with this split. Right. Six seven suited for Tobias. And Jennifer should be glad she folded that ace nine. Talal just calls with ace jack of spades. My gosh, Antonio. Hands out there, Phil. Wow. It's already four ways. And the jungleman to close the action. I like it. I think the jungleman just calls with tens. Wow. Is that sort of standard considering what's out there? That is completely not like him. I right. mean, you know, but he's changed his game for this final. Ace of clubs, seven of spades, nine of spades. Six, six, six. This pot looks over, I mean, to me. Talal's got everything. He has everything. He has top pair. He has the nut flush draw. He has a kicker. This pot just looks over. I think Jungle Man with a big six, raise would have won this pot before the flop, by the way. Six, I'm not five, saying six. that's the right move for his chip stack, but... Talal actually slipped it here on the flop. Wow, I'm not sure why. Wow, he doesn't want a seven or a six. Oh my God, he waited until Renkenmeyer hit three sevens to get involved. Oh, why did you do that, Talal? Why didn't you just fire? I mean, I I don't actually understand, Phil. I mean, it was a horrible play because too many cards come off where someone makes something that has you in bad shape, and uh, and there it is. You have to define. You have to define someone's hand with five-way action, right? Well, it's a seven-nine ace. Now, if you have the ace jack of spades, you want to get the money in there anyway. You don't want an eight to come off and somebody to have ten jack. You know, I mean, you just don't want it. So now he's just in payoff land, Shakerchi, and well, he needs a spade. I mean, the six of spades is a disaster. He just goes broke. But other than that, he needs a spade. Six of anything makes a full house for Rankemeyer. Now, Rinkemeyer already knows he checked ace-king and Talal checked behind him king-queen. Now, believe me, Rinkemeyer knows this. So he's thinking, I ha in order to get paid here, I have to bet, because Shikurchi could have ace-three here. He's not going to value bet it, and so I need to bet. And so the question is, how much will Talal pay off? And it, maybe s he'll bet 70000 Oh, he opted we'll to win a small amount of money. Yeah, Talal senses something here. He's like, all right, Rankin-Meyer doesn't bet into me on the river unless he has it. There's some history here that we haven't seen, but I still have to call, just in corner. case he has ace-10. Good eight. enough. And, and I think Tobias could have bet more there and been called, uh, frankly. I don't blame him for the bet size, but, you know, it seems, it seems okay. I have a look at the chip counts. Tilly's up into sixth. Tobias with half a million and Duhamel's in second place. Three players under 250,000, which very soon is, oh, going to be about 40 big blinds each. We are watching the Premier League Poker Season 6 Final. Our eight finalists are battling out for one of the most prestigious titles in the game. Let's rejoin your commentators, Jesse May and Phil Halmuth. Uh, in, in some ways, the pressure is just completely off, right? 
that's true. I mean, there is the matter of the trophy and the half million dollars to play for, but... Uh, but they're all pretty much not going to be losing very much money at this point. Correct. So, you know, and I think it's, you know, I think that this is a good group of people, and uh, they want to laugh. They want to have some fun. It is, and, and, you know, the big hurdle of getting through to the final table, which over the course of Premier League is a big hurdle. Uh, <laughs> you, f you feel like you've achieved, you know. Yeah. I feel like he just tells you the truth now yeah. about what you asked. He said truth, Gallagher. Gallagher is really small. I don't answer. You guys tried yeah. it on the table yeah. already? Yeah. When he was well, everyone always asked him if he's answered everything. with the raise, Duamel with the flat. Yeah. <laughs> he just has to tell the truth. I think if Antonio asks, he's going to ask. I'll just dodge the answer. Can you just ask him whenever he's betting on the river, like, <laughs> if he has it or not? <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky always telling the truth. Yeah, it is. Three bet from Trickett like in the big blind. <laughs> he's actually, he's done this with a hand here, right? Yes, uh, that, that's a hand I like to call with in the big blind just to take a flop because it's, uh, you know, the king-queen suited, there's just, you know, it could come an ace and you're just dead, but there's just so many nice flops where you can get people in trouble. Uh, it's back to Shikurchi now. In the jungle, in the jungle. Oh, wow, they both called. Interesting. Talal's going for this. He needs to set. And uh, he's put a big percentage of his stack in already. Sam doesn't like this. Let's see if Sam can find a 30k bet here, somehow, some way. Sure did. Genius, genius. He knows what he's doing. I think Sam and I think similarly about poker. Do seem to have a good read on what he's going to do next. I mean, there's really nothing here for Talal unless he can find something special. Six five folds. Uh, there we go. Six, six Easy folds. money. Sam Trigget, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only. What do you think of Sam Trigget, Jungle Man? Any thoughts? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Sam Trigget? Tricky. Tricky. <laughs> He's actually played quite a bit of poker on TV. Of course, he was the World Open winner a couple of years ago. And it's not like it's me and Shaq. Three bats being the Hamilton. Invited category. the Premier League yeah, last year. Showdown Ace King. <laughs> How did you get into that category? What have you been up to? Has he been bluffing off in the other heats? Oh, he's, oh. he's in the De Hamel category of our group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was the De Hamel of their group. Five raises to 13. But you had a real hand there, not just ace game. You know? Talal, That's my hand. Two black knights. Oh, to Hamel. Well, this is unfortunate for Shikarishi. This is kind of the best hand he's looked at since this started. Wow. No way he's going to get away. No way he can get away. He's flatted. He like, flatted uh, with the kings. Hole, and yeah. how could you <laughs> flat with the I, kings? Uh, I raised few pop what, what's the story? Like well, you you hit the nail on the head. I, I just I don't know what's I, I don't know why he didn't re-raise. This is the guy you want to re-raise too because he might move in with you know ace four offsuit and yeah. so and I even so he's a peeler i mean he, he but duamel might not know that but talal if he doesn't fold he's a peeler anyway wow i mean he would have busted uh talal this hand and now he's uh gonna win the minimum boy oh boy oh boy wow all do hamel had to do was re-raise before the flop talal's all in and we're down to seven I mean, I guess he was thinking about the guys Ooh. behind him, hoping for a squeeze, Phil. Is that just a Yes, uh, it's not a horrendous, but it's just once you've re-raised with ace-10. Right, right. It doesn't matter almost, yeah. Right. Now, once you've re-raised with ace-10, you might as well re-raise with kings because you know that people think you have ace-10. I still ended up winning, but to get that in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Good for Stop TV. Good yeah, TV. I'm sure. 
There has been uh, just a general feeling, uh, even among the guys who have gotten knocked out of this Premier League, or among most of them, that it's been fun. Uh, there's been a lot of laughing in this tournament, a lot of camaraderie, and uh, a lot of people saying that this kind of stuff should happen more often. Uh, not that the stuff that's going on in the poker world isn't great, but it's nice that there's variety. Dumamel gets away from the ace eight. Everything's calmed down in his mind now. Yeah. <laughs> ten of spades, four diamonds, ten of hearts. Ten of spades, four diamonds, ten of hearts. Guess this is the first time these two have squared Six, off. 18, and I wonder what Jennifer Tilly. I know she likes Jungleman, but what does she think of his game? Oh my gosh, is she going to do a little magic here? Oh, what a beautiful play. It, I mean, but what is it supposed to look like? This is a paired board. Yeah, but it's just a real tough spot, um, you know, for Jungle Man. Th this, this should be a fold, or is a fold for almost everybody. Yeah, I mean. And yet, does he feel like something's going on? That big sigh. Tilly got it through. And you love that, Phil. Um, it was a nice play. I mean, it was a nice play. And I'm just going to give her credit. Jungle, you have no idea what she has, right? <laughs> I have no idea, ever. <laughs> I thought she was bluffing. Jennifer, of course, played a great hand against Talal Shakurchi. Uh, you might have seen it, and I think it was the second heat where she made a, a, a very strange, on the flop, it was uh, she bet, Talal check raised, and she three bet. They both had air, and Talal said after, he said, it made no sense. I knew it made no sense, but because it was Jennifer, I just thought I had to fold. And she was bluffing. And, and Antonio needs to get moving. This is not a man who's going to go down to nine big blinds. It's just, it's not his style. Uh, yeah, and, and it makes sense that he moves in here. Boy, he's, he's bean pulled it. I mean, he's on the button and. Yeah. Uh-oh. My mom's gonna have a heart attack. You should take that into consideration. It's okay, mom. Either we go to dinner, we hang out, or we double up. Or we just live to see another day, you know? It's okay. See, the fact that the card hit your hand sort of makes me want to call because, like, you would think no one would want to call because the card hit your hand and now it changes your hand. Like, the reverse psychology thing, so throw it in and because then it might tilt somebody if they call because the card hit your hand. I'm like, I've known you too long. I, I know you're capable of something like that. Wow! <laughs> That's the problem. So Ed, there was a, it was a missed deal, yeah. a card was burned, and Antonio got update, a new card. Right? And Dan is bringing that into the equation. The other one obviously wasn't very See good. One. The magician got it through. Said, and mom can take a sigh of relief ahead. and breathe easy. Yeah, Baby boy is still in the tournament. <laughs> We're still a full table of eight. Here's the leaderboard as the blinds are going to go to four and 8,000. Rankemeyer and Duhamel are still on top, but it's actually tighter than it was before. Uh, S. Vandiari and Talal Shakerchi have their work cut out for them when the blinds go up. After the break, this final table continues to play out as our eight contenders make a bid for this championship title. We are in London, and tonight the final table is underway. We're still eight-handed, and the players are on a short break. Kara Scott has had a chance to catch up with Jonathan Duhamel, who narrowly escaped elimination earlier on.
there was a pivotal moment there for you where it could have gone against you. We could have lost you from the final, but you're still here. Talk to us about how it's been going. Uh, yeah, well, the start of the tournament, the final demo was pretty bad for me. I didn't get any hands. And then we got into one spot where uh, 2B 4-bet. And, uh, you know, it was a spot where I thought he could 4-bet light a lot of times uh, with the stack sizes and everything. I just felt with the dynamic of the game, uh, he would have 4-bet almost anything. So I just thought my ace-10 suited there was good. So I ended up shoving. Uh, he had ace-king, he had the best hand, but I got lucky and we got a split pot. And it seems like from there, just everything went well for me. Uh, feeling a lot better on the table right now. My, my reads are pretty good. Uh, so I got lucky there and now I'm playing good. So hopefully, uh, let's go till the win. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. A dynamic that is really hard to explain. These guys have been fighting now for an entire week. They're at the final table. Uh, they know what it's like to go out. But for some reason, no one wants to be the first one evicted from a final table. After that seal is cracked, they're going to fall like 10 pins and start pushing their chips. I never understand it. Yeah, and I think I think now that dynamic's going out the window because the four and eight thousand blinds, and so it's, the dynamic still exists where they don't want to be the first out. But I think people will start to uh, take more chances now. Now, anytime Duhamel picks up a hand, you kind of say, "Well, he's earned the action. He deserves it almost." Sam Trickett. And if he gets busy here, he's not going to be putting any more chips in the pot. Boy, him and Antonio have had a horrible, horrible time. I mean, Duhamel has owned them, and it's just, they've just made moves at the wrong time against them over and over and over again. And Sam's going to be frustrated when Duhamel just re-raises them here. It's a funny dynamic, Phil, because you were singing uh, sort of the benefits of Trickett and Esfandiari being able to be on the left of a guy like Duhamel. But if he's picking up hands, it kind of goes the other way because he gets action. Right, right, exactly. And and Duhamel's going to re-raise, and, and Sam's not going to... He's gone for the sledgehammer. <laughs> it's poor Sam. I mean, he's right. like, what did I do? <laughs> just giving you chips, Jonathan. I'm just giving you chips. <laughs> Jungle, can Duhamel be BB? Huh? Can he be beat? Uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> 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 that flash. I thought it might have, but I didn't see it. What flash? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh. There's been an exposed yeah. card. And Sam's just hoping it's not a missed deal because he has the ace king. Eight raises to 16,000. Well, Dan had king three. Let's see what his replacement cards are. And he's not a huge flatter. I mean, is that a pocket pair type of hand? I wonder. Well, yeah, he either has threes or he has a king queen or something. But anyway, I don't know. We're going to have to see his cards here. He's taking a second for the camera. The camera's on overload because now it's seen three cards from him. Two threes. So the miss deal gave him a pair of threes, which he played for 16,000. And if Tobias is thinking about a re-raise, I guess the reasoning, well, he's got a hand here. Tobias has waited a lot. See, this is frustrating for a player like me where I wait, 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 wait. And wow, here comes Talal. Wait, 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 wait. And I finally re-raise with ace, queen. And two guys have me and ba basically have me beat, you know? That how, can be frustrating. How clear is, is Talal's decision here based on his short stack? I mean... Well, Talal knows that Rankin-Meyer has, you know, in the past has made a lot of weak three bets. That's his game. And uh, Talal's playing to win, so I wouldn't be surprised if he shipped it here. But he's smart. Look at him. He's looking over to see if Sam has a hand. And if you can pick some, some huge tell of strength off of either one of these guys, he can actually get away from this hand. The reason, I mean, he's looking at Trickett in a sense. I wonder if he's thinking, Trickett hasn't really been that active from under the gun. I mean, is that? That's a good factor, Jesse. That's a very good point. Oh, oh my, my God. gosh. I mean, that's crazy. So he picks something. I'm going to say he picks something up because I've seen like him. It. And he's going to feel great when Trickett ships this in. I mean, he's going to feel like a hero. Well, 
He will until he sees it's Ace King. Um, because, you <laughs> right. know, I think Talal wants... the board wants, runs out, right? Right, right. Well, he wants to, <laughs> he wants to get it in there in a race. There is 88,000 in the pot right, right now. That feels like a lot of chips. This is just the sort of the a hallmark of his game, that he doesn't really make the big raises. But I, I, I think, you know, when you three bet it with ace, queen, and someone four bets you, you just ought to know it's no good, and, and it's just rarely is it good. And so it's just a spot where he could fold. He's chosen a different line, which is to call, and that's, that's very unusual. And that's bad for Sam. Oh, well, that's bad for Sam now. Trickett now is in a very tough spot. Um, although, from what you said, you feel like Rankemeyer could easily have a medium pocket pair here, so Sam has to bet to kind of blast that out of the water. And he hasn't. What does his check mean? It's not check to give up, is it? I mean, you know, I mean, a check does uh, force your opponent to bet two sixes or two se I don't know. I think six or sevens would check behind, actually. It's a very interesting check. There's a huge pot already in terms of the player's stacks. Essentially, there's more in this pot right now than Antonio has his, in his whole stack. You know, Sam's not exactly, he doesn't exactly have the luxury here of getting deep in this pot. Wow. Wow, he found a fold. He found a fold. You should just bet. Grab a suit and ace. Grab a suit and ace. Who knows? This Premier League has been played in a great spirit. And uh, we have had some seasons in the past where it hasn't all been played and the tempers have flared and it hasn't all been played in a great spirit. And uh, when it is, it uh, makes everyone... Either way, I think it's entertaining. Yeah. Oh, it's always entertaining, but doesn't always yeah. make everybody look good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jennifer with King Queen suited. Be raises to 18,000. Wow, Tobias with King King. Jeez. He can really do whatever he wants. So yeah. many players behind that is a is a flat uh, and he has gone that way. Four calls, seat five holes. I mean what different re well, obviously. Look at Duamel. I mean <laughs> this is why you're flat. You, because it doesn't really matter what Duamel has, he's just always looking for a for a chance to start moving chips. Cool. And he's gone for the call, which I didn't expect. It's not really his style so much, just because he's in position here, or? Yeah, a seven of spades, Jennifer raised, and he thinks maybe he has her beat. And oh, C4. damn, bad time to play the 10-6 offsuit. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Pot odds, pot odds. You just don't want to be against kings when you have the 10-6 offsuit. I mean, it's hard to beat it, you know? The diamonds for wow, eight top eight two for Duhamel. Amazing. See one checks. Wow, Jennifer three was three saved. Checks. Is this going to be as simple as check, 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 bet, fold? Could be. Look, I see he's trying to decide what to do here. If he bets enough and someone raises, he can just fold his hand because it's such a dry board, A7-4. So he's thinking, I'm going to fire and find out now. I'm willing to risk 35. If somebody calls me, I'm just done. Do I do have Mal is thinking, OK, I no longer have to raise here because I flopped top two. And, uh, you know, why raise? Exactly the conclusion Do Mel's came to when the others clear out. And he wants the other two to fold. So now he doesn't. All he has to do is worry about the guy that called the raise and, you know. Turn his Is Rankemeyer all done? He's trying to think of a hand he can beat. 
Maybe he's not trying to think Bullshit. of a hand he could beat. Maybe he's just done. It's going to be hard for Jonathan not to bet here. The deck has made him look clever here. Now, what is that about? Well, uh, defense, offense, right? The defense, you check for defensive purposes because you don't want to go broke in case your aces and sevens are beat. Your offensive reasons are if the guy has a, if, if he does have an ace, he's going to pay you off on the river. So that's okay. Let's see if he can find like a $47,000 bet, although it's more do Hamel style to make it like 68. I mean, there's not a lot of hands he Oh, my beat, gosh, he's going bigger. He's going even bigger, Phil. Six bets, 74,000. I said 68 is what yeah, he bet. Yeah, it's pretty close. <laughs> and uh, really, Tobias has to himself, what can I beat? I mean, if he had the 7-8 suit that he got there, you know, what can I beat? Right. And why would Duhamel just float with nothing with two players behind him on the flop? Exactly. He's not curious, Rankemeyer. I guess that's the mark of a good player. I wonder if Rankemeyer does raise if Jennifer Tilly, I think she's going to call before the flop with the king, queen of diamonds. And he's the chip leader now, the Canadian Jonathan Duhamel, the 2010 world champion of poker. It's been his week, I think, you know? I mean, he's... He's found some nice, favorable spots. He's won a couple nice pots with Ace-10. Not just tonight. Well, that, well, that was a split, but... Great bluff of Antonio Esfandiari in the third 18, heat with the Ace-10. 18's a little bit more than she usually raises. Every time he gets a good hand, it's a bad spot, and he's going all in. Seven is all in. Two eight folds. This might not be the, the hand Antonio wants to do it with, but he might feel like he's never getting a better spot. This is where I just, I don't. You don't, I don't like it. I mean, for Dan, to, for Dan to take more than a few seconds here is. Just, oh right. Yeah, you know, I don't like the, uh, you know. I mean, he's not going to call 147 with deuces, so. Right. This is a spot that I would just like to see people play a little faster. <laughs> Quick call from Jen, I imagine. She has called. Good call. Good and call. it's a flip. Come on, baby. Yeah, no luck. I know you're rooting for a king or a queen. Where's my mom? Mom, where are you? <laughs> Mom, we need a king or a queen. Well, he needs a sweat. Very oh, interesting. Oh, oh my oh, God. Jeez. <laughs> no 10, Mom. We're good. I need a 10. I swear. 10. What 10 did you call? 10 of diamonds? I swear I did. 10 of diamonds. No, I believe you. You had a 10 of diamonds. You had a 10 of Oh, now we need a... I should have gone. Ten of diamonds. Jack? No, I don't need anything. Give her a jack. <laughs> no, I don't want a jack. Give her a jack. I need a ten of diamonds. <laughs> or a seven of hearts. Well, Jennifer is still oh, going to be you in. Mom, you can go ahead and attack. You're but the big down. news, Phil Helmuth, with Antonio doubling up. Jennifer is not the only one who's upset. Guys like Rankemeyer, Duhamel, they know things have changed, and they can expect some chips to move. What's happening? S. Vandiari, okay, it's only fifth in chips, but he feels like he's got chips to play with. I think he's going to start making noise. This is turning into a marathon final. We are still eight-handed. After the break, the blinds go up and we move a step closer to crowning this season's champion here in London. This is the Premier League Poker Final. Eight of the very best are gunning for the trophy. There are huge rivalries and histories between them all as they have competed in events worldwide. The lineup is really tough lineup and there's people in the lineup that delight in torturing me. Uh, Tobias really goes after me, Talal goes after me, and Antonio goes after me. Jennifer and I have 
played many times, and punishing her in a pot is indirectly punishing my dear friend Phil Locke, so there's some purity that goes along with that. One time I played with Tilly, she owned my life in every single pot, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen today. Oh, they're all amazing players. There's, there's really no weak spots. I don't think there's a person at, at this table, uh, and forget about the prize money, just as far as the poker goes, uh, everyone is thinking to themselves, geez, I wish two or three players would bust so I could start playing more hands, I could start doing more things. Eight-handed is, it, it limits your options, in a sense. It really does, you know, when you're playing eight-handed, it's likely that there's a hand out there a lot of the times, and, you know, uh, and so it's just you're a little bit handcuffed. It's not like you can just go crazy and raise every pot because people are going to figure it out and start raising you back. So then that makes you, that puts the handcuffs on. You're handcuffed to the chair and you just end up uh, folding. Yeah, and when everybody at the table is eating, that's the time to bear down and, and, and put those little raises in. Boy, Dan Shack has been quiet tonight. I mean, uh, this is probably, oh, I don't know, the f fifth or sixth hand he's played. That's it. And here comes Jungle Man right over the top. Dan Shack hasn't played a hand forever, so Jungle Man's reasoning is okay. Um, he's going to raise light in the cutoff, and I'm just going to re-raise him. Right, and this is opinionated because the King Seven is is basically worthless. Right, he has absolutely nothing, and so, and Dan Shack is a little bit handcuffed here. First he grabbed his chips, then he went to fold his cards. Wow, he called with the six, seven spaces. It turns out he's in bad shape. He doesn't want a seven. But he hit his six. Now, these guys are coming from opposite sides of the draw, so you know that the book on Dan Shack is that he's a little sticky, hard to get off a pot once he starts putting chips in. Oh, yeah. But the jungle man may not have that information at all. Wow. He might not, he just might not care. That's unbelievable. So I, I just hate Dan's call there. If he's going to flop a six and lay it down, why call? You know, I mean, uh, this. That, that was not a, a very good uh, poker play there. Kate's finding a little wrinkle in the atmosphere. He got away with one. Yeah. You know, he got away with one. Actually, he had the best hand before the flop. <laughs> and he made, um, well, geez, nearly like 70, 80,000 in chips there. That's significant. I have to say that uh, Jungle Man um, is playing pretty good today. I mean, I didn't like the Queen Ten hand, but it seems like he's, you know, played pretty well besides that. He's still finding spots if they exist, isn't he? Uh huh. And look at this Shikerchi. <laughs> Just the jack high, but he's had enough. He's getting called here for sure. I love not looking at you. Know? I mean, the only reason Duhamel would have for not calling here is if he has no idea who Talal Shakerchi is or what he's capable of. Oh, I think I think that Jonathan watched a few of these, didn't he? I think so. Actually, I'm sorry, 174,000 is quite a big bet. Sorry, it's, um... What difference does it make? I can never beat you, kid. It's 14 there. Wow. He's made the move anyway. He has the ace nine. He didn't hesitate to stick 174 in. <laughs> Antonio looking at the seven deuce. So Shikerchi. Well, Talal figured to be the first one out. I don't know why it's 50-50, oh, because they've seen all the whole cards. But, you know, the math is basically normally like, you know, 60-40. Yeah, two nines and an ace got folded. And, uh... And no jacks and no fives, so uh, so the computer is doing the math based on the hands that are out. Anyway, it's going to be unless the ace comes, it's going to be a huge double up for Shakerchi, who uh, showed he wasn't scared to push him in and gets rewarded for his courage, if not his hand. You call it courage. <laughs> you thought it was a little, it was a little too tall for you there, huh? Right. I mean, you could call it impatience too. 
or just uh, a determination that he didn't want to have a short stack. It can't be stack. horrible uh, for him to shove there with Jack High, but it's, he, it can't be horrible. So we'll just say that. And plus, it's just do it's just the Duhamel and Esfandiari right. guys who are going to you know make that call I lighter guess. than you know. They're not going to make a mistake there, are they? So. Right. That's a good point. But you right. know what? That's a really good point. You don't have to do what everybody tells you to do. We respect you for that. And the two short stacks at the table, yeah, now that Shakerchi has doubled through Dohomel, are going to be Jennifer yeah, Tilly and Sam big. Trickett. Uh, now, Trickett's a guy who is going to try and find a spot. No, no, no. They're attempting. I don't know where he's going to find it. Attempted the impression. I didn't say it was successful. Well, he's waited. Let's see what happens. Two, two more, two more rounds. Two more rounds. Who will be the Premier League champion? There are, there is a lot of prize money available on this final table, including the four hundred fifty thousand dollars for first. Wow, he just can't even. T Did he, he can't just even peel this for 36k? For 36, so I think it was a nice adjustment that was made here by Tobias. He opened for a full three X rays to try to get rid of Talal with his A7, and uh, Talal just said, "I call <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I have Jack seven of spades. I'm the guy that plays every flop." So and now, of course, he's flopped a flush draw. Tobias just can't win the spot. It worked for him. He plays so much better. They're, they're, I, I want to say they're deep, but they're 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 deep compared to everybody else. They're both playing about uh, 350 back or so. And I I mean what I mean is it's probably too deep for for Talal to shove here. So should he just raise to get it in? Should he call? Should he? Talal's style is to raise here, and uh, he has a jack high flush draw and really. You know, uh, there's a good chance he's going to win it. He knows that. It's the kind of board, it's it's a little hard to represent too much. I mean, you would flat here if you had a queen if you were Talal, wouldn't you? So. Yeah, they have to do shot in the booth. In the booth, they have to. Agree. They have to. You hear that? We want 10 shots. Yes, you feel you have to do a shot in the booth. And we have to do one, two, three, and they got to do it at the same time. Yeah. Oh, my God, they want us to do shots I'm in here. Uh, what do they expect the commentary I, to look I, like? I, I, I've, I'm, a, I'm a participator, not a party pooper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bring us some shots. <laughs> He has raised, Phil, and I, I guess, I mean, what is Tobias going to say to himself? Well, remember, Tobias and, and, and Talal have played some crazy sure pots. Have. I was only there for, I didn't see a lot of their heats, but I was there when they went crazy with ace-deuce versus ace-three. And uh, Rankin Meyer, he's in a tough spot here. He's decided to just, fl I mean, this is, uh, this, this, this kind of is Tobias to a T. Let's see what happens next. He just called thinking that he has the best hand, and now he's drawing dead. He's going to recognize that's a bad card for him. Can Talau somehow check this? I don't think he can. The problem is he's thinking that, you know, um, his opponent might have a coin, in which case he gets more money, or... Um, his opponent might be live, like with pocket nines, and you don't want to give him a free nine or deuce. But he should also, so I think he has to bet. This is a, such a significant pot as well, because uh, b before this hand started, Tobias and Talal were both in the top, I think, four spots in chips. Um, Remember the last time he had him drawing dead, Tobias studied for a long time, thinking about moving in when he was drawing dead. That was early in the heat. Right, right. And uh, these, these hands sometimes get to me, too, where you just know your ace high was, you just know your hand was good on the flop. And then the deuce comes off. But it is a spade, so if an obvious, the flush draw has hit. Not yet. 
If you've been watching this entire Premier League, of course, you saw, you know, some of the crazy pots right. they've played. And so there's a lot more going on right, here sir. than the fact that Talal could just and have a queen or a flush draw. I mean, you know, there's a certain percentage of hands these guys play where it's just always air. <laughs> you know, I mean, and uh, I think that that's part of Tobias's, uh, has to be part of his thought process. Right, yeah. Right? I mean, don't you play with some guys where you just have to say, sometimes, no matter what, there's just, they could just have nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't know how many times uh, Rankin-Meyer would put, you know, call off 100,000, call off whatever it was, 40, 30,000 on a queen-deuce three board with a seven against how many opponents. But that is one opponent you could do it against. Right. <laughs> And uh, Talal Shakerchi starting to make some noise here. Well, I mean, he's playing to win, but I mean, yeah. it's just hard to win all these pots he's winning. I mean, he called a, he called a big, big, big raise. Yeah. Tobias's biggest raise of the Premier League, I believe, uh, with Jack seven against Ace seven, right. and somehow he's stacking them out in the chips right now. <laughs> and not out, you know? That's so funny. Tobias is thinking to himself, you know, I should. why am I making a 3X? I know I've got to make a 5X if I want to get this guy to fold. I mean, you know, sometimes logic, uh, forget logic, forget math. Yeah. Uh, get, get, get real. <laughs> Can I say it yet? What a good soul read. Jungle Man again. Oh, my oh, God. Hard. Hasn't he had kings he twice really and has. aces twice? He really has. God, he said all these the weird hands, hands, and it's just... And I yet, I, I, said I, I feel say, like he's done enough so in the long. meantime, yeah. we're talking about his V-pip and stuff, I said, to be able to get action when he gets the big hands. Nine, and ten off suit. Is Rankemeyer going to... Rankemeyer's supposed to be able to figure this out. I folded it face up, ace four. What do you mean by that? Well, yeah, sure. a live so reading is so Jungle Man to me. Jo I've had uh, no, reading I, Jungle Man has not I been hard for me. Wow. Huh. Obviously, except for the fact that the seven it is in. Good fold, he made. So my Careful, way. Jonathan. Nine, ten off. It was brilliant. This on guy gets it. This guy steps seven. into it more than I anyone I've seen. <laughs> Yeah, but you haven't put, he and I have a lot of history. Once he gets that it look on his face, that, you don't usually that. see him folding, yeah. Phil. It's the bulldog look. Yeah, but he also, he's also made a couple of good reads here. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. And he obviously never would have shoved if the seven didn't hit his head. He's never shoving 9-10 in the cutoff. I'm, I mean, the, the big problem, I think, for, for all these guys, is that wow they, he raised it they have to try and find a marginal spot because they see what's going on you can't even look at this oh, <laughs> antonio was going broke this hand yeah, he was he was i mean has he gotten know. saved here he's gotten saved it's just this is a I, this feels like a really tough spot for him he's good he's good yeah see i don't think it's that tough jungleman obviously trying to decide if he should shove or or peel, he will get the he will get the C bet, I guess. I think all in's just a bad raise. Some people move all in to avoid, you know, variance, but 110 might keep him interested. All done, says Jonathan. Wow. And, and that was Antonio's it. bust out hand or double up hand right there. And uh, he got taken right out of the action. Saved by the bell, perhaps. Oh, he was moving in. I mean, for sure. <laughs> I'm sure you've been on final tables where the average average big blinds have been, you know, 15 big blinds with everybody. I mean, you must have probably World Series of Poker final tables like that. There were a couple of years where the, the structure was a little bit hazy um, in the early days. 
I believe it wasn't there a year when they were they were the, they were getting to final tables and the blinds were always so big that they actually started rolling back the blinds. Uh, that was that 2001, 2002, somewhere around that. Yeah, that's true. They used to roll back oh. the blinds, and it was strange because if and that was a world that was a world poker tour thing actually because the blinds would seal be so big that they wouldn't have a television show. Right. And so they would. And so I just remember. I think I finished seventh month. Uh oh. Not good for Antonio. And Rankemeyer has found a limp. He's up to 40,000 Which is odd to start with. I mean, this might be the first time Rankemeyer has limped in mid position of the entire tournament. So, what's the story? Wow, this is just strange. He, he does have a reason for everything he does. Yeah, and you know, I think he's planning on going with it. I think I think that if he just raises, that Antonio is going to move in, and uh, and he'd already have Mullen and in, in bad shape. So you're saying his plan was to shove here, and now that it's been Antonio, he's not 100% sure about it. He's starting to question himself. The interesting thing is, we have one of these spots where he's thinking about all three options. Oh my God! Wow. How good is Antonio running? Cool. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. He got the guy that dominated him out and got called by the guy that he I mean, has dominated. Just, that is unbelievable. That is scary. That's like the weirdest, that is the weirdest wrinkle you have ever seen. How about that? That's the magician for you, Phil Helmuth. That's why Antonio is the magician. I think he put the, he put the hoodoo. He put the hoodoo on Tobias. And he did that right as well. There is no way he's going to let Talal get his chips in first. Uh, Not knowing so Talal. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> when Antonio does find out about that hand, he is going to have a long belly laugh, isn't he? Oh, he's going to love it. I mean, just think if Tobias makes his usual 25K, Antonio. Now Antonio might just call or, or shove. Or shove. And I think I really think he's going to shove. <laughs> And now Tobias can at least, uh, you know, evaluate his options a little bit differently, yeah. knowing that, you know, how long it takes Antonio to do it, all the decisions he makes, you know what I mean? There is no way Antonio doesn't win this tournament. There's been too many times when, as you said, he's supposed to go broke, and he's kind of, he's wriggled out of it for someone else has wriggled him out. It's crazy, isn't it? Not always, but... Just in time to the rescue, ride the aces. And based on the dynamics that Duhamel has with Talal, what is he going to decide to do? I guess you just always flat here in early position because there's such a big chance that something will happen around the back. Well, he flatted with kings. He's going to try flatting with, uh, with the aces. I mean, everyone else is thinking, well, you just can't, how do you even find a hand that big, so. Now, I wonder if Dan considers this a spot. No. Certainly is. And, you know, there's probably a lot of flops where Duhamel gets the full double up here from Talal, would you? There really are. Um, that is not one of them. Wow, well, it's a bad flop for me. Duhamel can kind of check this till the cows come home. <laughs> Look at Talal. I love it. <laughs> Just go for it, baby. Now, why not? I'm actually going to have to get a hand to bust, I think. I mean, he's never going to do anything but call the here, is he? Is what? Well, well he, he figures the longer he studies, the weaker he looks. Yeah. 200 a second. This is about pride right now. It's halfway there. Oh, that's a shot now. Oh, would have been nice to bust you, Tobias. Shot to hit a king. Bust the Break a straight legend. would look like nice, gold right? to him, but sure. bust him. You never bust the German legend before? I never know. They own me. In Australia, they just completely own me. So Talal, is he thinking to himself, think look, he may have floated me with a pocket pair. I'm going to have to fire this bullet. 
I actually did one of the two. Doom Alice actually, by law, by good play law, he's forced to study like 35 seconds here. Oh, thank God. Right. I've got like three more he, hands to play. He has to balance this. Because when this gets turned over at the end, he doesn't want to be considered of a of a too much slow play and tanking, I mean. And there he goes. By law. By law he's required to wait a little bit. If it comes a king, we're out here. Yeah, well that's not very likely. I mean If Talal was to make a very big bet here, Phil. Okay. He gave up. No, put it away. And he's not even going to show. Not yet. Oh, he can't show. No way. <laughs> Every time Juha Mel gets himself in trouble, he just picks up his shovel and digs his way out. We are six levels in and still eight-handed here at our final table. No one wants to bust, and players are yo-yoing up and down the leaderboard. For now, it's Jungleman who is sitting pretty at the top, and Jennifer Tilly and Sam Trickett who need to make some moves to get back in the mix. What an incredible final this is turning out to be here in London. Our finalists are still battling it out, and next time we find out who will reign supreme and lift this season's Premier League trophy. It's one thing to push off your stack, and it's another thing to call off your stack. Things not looking too well. You're not going to speak a word to me, are you? I didn't mean that, sorry. I didn't even look at my cards. I don't think you've got it. You don't look like you've got it. I'm that baller.